Vroom, vroom, vroom. Vroom, vroom, vroom. Hello, everybody. Today, with the help of Fusion 360 and $60,000 worth of student debt, I'm going to design a custom instrument cluster for my engine-swapped Miata. Ever since I performed the Ecotech engine swap on my 1992 Mazda Miata, uh, some of the gauges haven't been working uh, correctly, since, you know, it's a General Motors engine inside of the Miata. Um, so, the gauges that don't work right are the tachometer, and the uh, oil pressure gauge, uh, which for some people that might not be a big issue, but when I see something that doesn't work, I wanna make it work. So I purchased here an original instrument cluster out of an NA6 Miata, because prior to uh, me engine swapping my NA Miata, it had the 1.6 in it, so this seemed like a pretty good idea to get it. Uh, and I didn't wanna destroy uh, my original instrument cluster simply because it has the mileage of the vehicle on it, and uh, I don't know. If I'm gonna be tearing something apart and destroying it, I like to have an extra one, just in case I do mess up. So my main goals for this project are of course going to be to have all the gauges work. I purchased this instrument cluster mainly because I want to be able to switch back and forth if I want to, um, from the stock one to the aftermarket one that I'm gonna make, um, and because, you know, wiring management. And of course, arguably the most important thing is I want it to look cool. Um, so I'm going to do my best to make it look cool instead of just looking dated like this one. So yeah, this is going to be a multi-part series. So today we're just going to be uh, designing the cluster. And uh, if any of you guys in the comment section below want to give me any feedback on how I can improve my design, uh, be sure to leave a comment. And I read all of them and I do my best to respond to all of them. So be sure to comment if you have any ideas. In order to take these clusters apart, you really only need two things. And that is a utility knife and a small flat blade screwdriver. I did not look up the correct way how to disassemble these, so something might break on it. Not too big of a deal, since, you know, it's gonna be all torn apart and rewired. Um, so I'm not too worried about uh, breaking anything on it. Um, but if you are, be sure to look up a video by somebody who knows what they're doing. So to start out, I'm gonna flip it around to the back. Um, and there's this little pigtail here. Um, I believe this is for the airbag light. Not sure. Haven't looked at the wiring diagram for this yet, um, but I'm just going to slide that out of the way and that is free to pull through. Next up, we're going to take our flat blade screwdriver. We're going to press on this little black tab here and just kind of push it through and then do that all around. It helps if you push it down with your finger and then wedge the screwdriver in there, kind of pull away from it just to give it yourself a little bit more leverage there. All right, we got one. And now that we got one, we can go ahead and work our way around. Just simply pulling away. Very simple process. It might take you a minute though, but once you get the first one, they should all kind of just fall into place. All right, I believe it is. All right, so yeah, the front bezel is off now. Um, just be careful pulling this wire through to not damage the PCB because it's pretty flimsy. It's just like a thin layer of plastic. Now you're left with the instrument cluster separated uh, from the uh, front bezel and the little acrylic panel on the front. Next up, there's a bunch of little um, plastic tabs uh, that are kind of melted. Uh, I cut them off already with a utility knife and then the front panel just pops right off. There's a couple little dabs of glue uh, that hold it around, it looks like. Um, like right here, it looks like there might have been a dab of glue. Um, and then down in here. Uh, but like I said, I'm not too worried about it. Um, with this now, I can go ahead and take measurements off of it and generate a file in Fusion 360 uh, of just a flat plane, and then I can accommodate it to uh, fit my gauges. The gauges that I will be using uh, in this project are going to be glow shift gauges because I've used them in the past. They look great, um, they work really well, and they're a pretty good price for what they are. Uh, this is a uh, this is going to be the tachometer 
This is a three and three quarter inch uh, gauge. It's a pretty low profile for as big as it is. And then this one is a smaller two inch gauge. Uh, this is gonna be my wide band. Um, still pretty low profile. Same size as the other one. Um, there's not a ton of room in the cluster. This uh, white piece is going to be reused, of course, with all of this stuff torn out of it. Um, but there's still not a ton of room in there. Um, so with my 3D printed part that I'm going to be putting over it, uh, I'm, of course, going to have to add some uh, extra width to that to accommodate the thickness of these gauges. While I'm in here, actually, I'm going to begin uh, taking this apart. Um, simply because I want to see how much room I have in here to work with. I understand a lot of this will likely need to be dremeled out, um, but I don't know how much yet. Oh, that's a pretty long screw. <laughs> I really should have looked up how these come apart. I feel bad breaking anything because it's survived this long. I'm assuming the needles just pull off. Oh yeah, they do. Okay. Whew. Uh, so now we can roll back the tack if we want. I'm actually curious how easy it is to roll back the tack in one of these. Let's see if we could figure out how to do it. I do not recommend rolling back uh, your tachometer. Um, that is a crime. Don't do that. Um, but I'm curious how easy it is to do in one of these. All right, here, so here's the speedometer assembly. I think I've been saying tack. This is a speedometer, not a tachometer. Uh, it's got a really simple mechanism that uh, resets the uh, trip odometer. Um, this is where your um, uh, speedometer cable would come. Curious. I mean, just looking at this, I don't see a way how to do it, so I guess that's a good thing. Oh, that's bad. That's really bad. Yeah, you just loosen the front part, and you're if you just if you have enough patience, you could sit here and dial those numbers all the way back. That's bad. That's really bad. I don't like that. That makes me very uncomfortable knowing how easy that is to do. Oh boy. Um. Yeah, that's that's kind of uh. That's kind of like concerning. Knowing that. In about 10 minutes you could take one of these apart and just if you have enough patience go ahead and just oh wow oh look you don't even need to uh, play with this if you just apply a little bit of force it just rolls right forward That's that's pretty bad, I'll be honest. I didn't think it was that easy to uh, roll one of these back. Look, now it has 86,000 miles on it. Okay, so I think this is actually a good thing. Um, by playing with this and, uh, like, I obviously have no intention of rolling back this um, odometer because it's not going to be used in anything. Uh, I, I did break it. Um, I didn't apply any sort of excessive force, um, but you can see the numbers are misaligned now. So if your numbers are misaligned in your uh, odometer, uh, that might mean that it has been uh, rolled back. So there you go. We learned something today. By the way, if any of you want any of these parts out of this one, um, other than the odometer, um, be sure to let me know. I will give you a great price on anything that you see that you would want out of this cluster. I know the uh, these oil pressure gauges out of the NA6, they're pretty sought after because in later years um, they just use dummy gauges. There's your oil pressure gauge. Um, this is out of the NA6, so this is not the dummy gauge. This is the one that everybody wants. Uh, presumably it worked, according to the uh, seller of this cluster. Everything worked. So if anybody wants this, 
Go ahead and claim it. Anybody need a coolant temperature gauge? Fresh out of a 180,000 mile cluster. Anybody need any bulbs? Got lots of bulbs. All the bulbs you'll ever need. And I just dropped one. Didn't break though, so that's good. Anybody need bulbs? Or the little uh, connector things on the back of them? I have lots of them now. There is a tack. There we go. Anybody need a fuel gauge? I got one. So there's a fair bit of work that needs done to get this to be fitting the new gauges, but that's not an issue. We'll save that for next time. Uh, but now that we have this all torn apart, we can go ahead and design our new part. All right, so here's what I came up with. Just kidding, here's what I came up with. So I designed this to a company, um, these cool little indicator lights that I got. Um, two turn signal lights, um, the all important check engine light, which will likely be on 24 seven, the parking brake light, um, the battery light, and the high beam light. Uh, so I have this uh, designed to accompany one of the three and three quarter inch gauges. Um, this is going to be where the tack goes. Then we'll have a dual fluid temperature gauge, our uh, fuel level gauge, speedometer, and then our uh, AFR gauge. So this is the design that I came up with. Uh, if you guys like it, be sure to let me know. If you don't like it, tell me how I can improve upon it. Uh, with the amount of room there is on the stock cluster, um, really can't accompany uh, everything that I would need if I made the speedometer one of the larger size gauges too. Uh, so I just have to suck it up and have a smaller one. Plus I think it'd look cool to have the large uh, tack in the middle, full Subi style, um, but yeah. That is what I came up with. But yeah, that's going to be about it for today. Like the video if you liked it. Dislike it if you didn't. And if you're a first-time viewer, be sure to subscribe. I have lots of more cool content on my channel. And be sure to stay tuned uh, for the rest of this series, Making This Instrument Cluster. I'll see you all next time.